So do you have the fat gene? That's not meant as an insult. It's actually a real thing. So there's been a lot of progress lately in genetic testing, and a lot of it's actually gone towards fitness and diet, figuring out why certain people are able to lift heavier weights versus lighter weights and make gains, why certain people prefer carbs or, or fats in terms of losing weight. Uh, but there's been actually a lot of study around this gene called the fat gene. Uh, more technically, it's called the FTO gene. And it actually regulates how easily you're able to store body fat. So I'll talk a little bit about why we would even have a gene like that, and then what you can do about it. So every gene we have in our body was designed at some point to help us survive and thrive in our environment. And you can imagine then in some cultures, uh, you know, thousands of years ago, where there was food that was plentiful year round, there was a long growing season, long hunting season, you probably didn't need to store a lot of body fat. In fact, it probably was counterproductive if you were too heavy to run after your prey or run from predators. But in other parts of the world, if you had uh, your ancestry came from a place where there was very limited food supplies at certain times of the year, then the people who were able to eat more than they needed to at any particular meal and store more body fat were probably gonna be more likely to survive those lean times, lean, you know, making it through a winter where you couldn't grow anything or couldn't even hunt anything down. So having uh, a greater store of body fat was gonna make you more likely to survive and therefore, over time, those generations would pass down those genes to people who would then have what's called the fat gene. So today, we, at least here in the United States, live in an environment where fortunately, few of us uh, have any issues finding food. In fact, it's around us all day long. So we're able to get food, eat food, and unfortunately store body fat pretty easily, whether or not we have the fat gene. But for the people who have that gene, and specifically both copies of it, they actually have a propensity to store body fat easier than others. And here's what happens. The two things that that gene controls, one is it controls some hormones that are related to hunger and satiation. So when you get hungry, how long you stay hungry, and when you start to feel full. I won't go into the hormones, it's leptin and ghrelin, and we can do a whole separate discussion on the details there. But basically for some people, you get hungry, you start eating, and that those hunger signals fade and you feel full, and so you don't eat much more. For other people, that signal doesn't kick in until much longer. You can be already full and still feeling like you're hungry. And that's because that gene actually plays a role in that. Uh, also, the gene plays a role in how easily you store the body fat. So it's not just eating more calories, but how easily your body can produce fat cells and have those fat cells take up uh, extra calories and store them. So what do you do if you have that? Or, or how do you even know if you have that? One way is you can go get uh, the gene testing done. There's a lot of companies now. Uh, I use this company, DNA Fit, which is where I've done a lot of my data analysis and many of our members have. Um, here, see the FTO gene. I actually don't have either copy of it, um, which doesn't explain entirely why I've been able to stay lean. So much of it is diet and exercise, um, but that certainly helps me. Um, but having or not having that gene doesn't guarantee that you will or will not put on weight. Uh, I have two brothers who put on a lot more weight than I do. Sorry, guys. Um, but if you don't eat well and if you don't work out as much, then regardless of you having that gene, that's likely to happen. So there's people who don't have either copy of the gene that are obese. There's people that do have both copies of the gene that are not. But if you get tested, this company probably more and more in the future will be able to do this testing, and you see you have both copies of that gene, that does mean you have a higher propensity to put on weight because you're more likely to overeat and you're more likely to store body fat. So what do you do? Well, a couple things. One, on the overeating part, knowing that it's gonna be harder for you to feel full, you can start using some little diet tricks or hacks to try to feel more full. You can eat more fiber-rich and water filled foods like fruits and vegetables. Filling up on those that take up a lot of space in your stomach, that have a lot of fiber, that helps you make you, make you feel more full is gonna help with the hunger issues. Uh, eating more protein is a big one. Protein is very satiating. So if you're eating more of that, especially at the beginning of your meal and pushing off your 
sweets and your breads until later in the meal, you're less likely to overeat on those. Also, uh, less sugary drinks, anything that has calories that you're drinking is super easy to overconsume whether or not you have the fat gene. So cutting out liquid calories is gonna be important. Drinking more water so you feel more full. So those are some tricks. Whether or not you have that gene, I think it's helpful. Drink more water, less sugary calories. Uh, take more fruits and vegetables into your diet, more protein, especially front load those at the beginning of a meal. You can even maybe drink a fiber drink, put some Metamucil and some water and drink it before you're gonna go out to eat. Maybe you'll feel more full, less likely to overeat during the meal. And then on the other side of the equation, you do need to exercise, you need to move more. If you have a higher propensity to take an extra calories and store them, you're just gonna need to move around more. It doesn't mean going to the gym five times a week instead of three. It just means maybe parking a little bit further in the parking lot so you can walk a couple extra steps. It means taking the stairs a few more times instead of the elevator. Those little tricks add up to just burning more calories throughout the day and are gonna help you whether or not you have that fat gene. But know that there really is such a thing and if you want to get tested, you can find out if you have it or not. And it may explain why, if you've had a hard time losing weight, that you actually are more predisposed to overeating a little bit at every meal and storing fat easier, which is, it's a bummer, but once you know it, you can control for it and you can help fight the battle of obesity. So that's my tip for the day. A little bit on the fat gene. We'll cover some other genes in some other videos too. Uh, this is some fascinating stuff, but knowing whether you have a propensity or not to store fat or in some of the other genes, whether you should do more heavy weights, light weights, uh, whether you should actually cut out more carbs or more fats to lose weight, all super helpful information that we're starting to learn more about with gene testing. So a lot of hope on this front. I'm excited about it. If you got any questions, shoot them my way. Thanks guys.